Gino, you focus on consciousness. Uh, there's this whole area of psychosomatic medicine that shows that how the, uh, uh, the, the mind, the, the mental state can help the physical state in, in different ways. But that's very, uh, uh, th that's very much mediated by the physical um, hormones and things going on. When you talk about the interaction between the mind and the body, it, it, is there some deep spiritual nature there or just purely physical activities going on? Well, right now, uh, spiritual is an unknown term and, you know, we can argue that or discuss that for a long time. I'd rather focus on things that we can really talk about. And really related to this, it's understanding the relationship between the mind and the body. And so physically we're here, but in, this, in the realm of conversation, we seem to be somewhere as well. And so the question is, what is the relationship between this mental space and the physical body? And how did this mental space come about? And how did the mind come about? Okay. And so for that, we're really looking at, we've been looking at developmental psychology and, and child development. And arguably, just when you turn a computer on, where a computer has to load its BIOS and, and, and the hard disk spins and the operating system loads up, for the mind to come develop, you know, there, there seems to be, you know, for this mind to, to, in education, we're trying to educate people to be able to communicate from the realm of the mind. And so it's really understanding how that comes to play. And understanding the relationship of the mind as it develops with the body. So arguably when we're born, I don't know if you remember when you were a baby, but <laughs> arguably there is no idea of mind. It's fairly empty, a blank slate, and you know, behavioral psychology and a lot of psychologists, that's one of the theories around this. And what, but what happens is we have awareness of the surroundings and we have sensations in the physiology. And what happens is as we become aware, we notice that certain things happen in a repetitive way. So there are certain sensations that I may feel, and then I might feel some liquid on my leg or, you know, poo-poo, so wee-wee, poo-poo. And we start building a mentally constructed worldview. And so from this mother, father, crib, room, light, all of these, these things happen. And so these things become concepts in the mind, but they actually bind to sensations and processes in the physiology. And so there's a binding between these ideas that we have in the mind and processes and sensations in the physiology. And so as we experience life, we build a mentally constructed worldview, which then motivates us to act and behave. And then the outer world, the world then interacts with that based upon our intentions. Some things may work, accidents may happen, things may happen, which then influence the, the physiology in terms mm -hmm. of triggering the autonomic nervous system or giving me a dopamine feeling or you know this kind of a thing, which then reinforces a mentally constructed worldview, which reinforces behavior, which reinforces the homeostasis of the physiology. And so we end up in this, this loop, arguably, of behavior Positive feedback. And, Pos yeah, and, and so really trying to, 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 and so if we look at this mind-body relationship, all of this ultimately has to do, and so from that you build a mentally constructed worldview. And if you think about what the mentally constructed really worldview really does, is it regulates the energy in your physiology. So for example, if you've got a big project coming in and you get success, you feel really elated, And but if something bad happens, your girlfriend breaks up with you mm -hmm. or you lose your job or some, your, parents die or something like this, you feel down. And so these symbols, these things that, 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 that I'm getting into a bit, but these things that are in the mind that, that, that you have an emotional attachment to, you know, changes, per, changes of perception in there will arguably change what's going on within your physiology in terms of the ability to regulate energy and maintain homeostasis, which then can potentially create disease. And because and, ultimately, from a scientific perspective, your body is just a collection of cells working together to keep the organism alive. Yeah, I mean, this, this makes eminent sense. I yeah. mean, this is, but this is standard Western understanding of yeah. how the body and mind work together. Yeah, and, and so we're, we're... Is there any deep insight in terms of what the mind is? I mean, this is, this is very standard well, stuff. But, but then the very question... Very nicely explained, but... The, the interesting thing about this is from your perspective then, I'm just a semantic token. You know, all of the conversations that we've had before, based upon your past experiences, get attached to me. And so when I'm sitting here, you're going to feel a certain way, right, et cetera. Right, right. And so all of your understanding and, and feeling towards that, you know, come from that. But then even the questions that you're asking in all of this, within this, <laughs> are 
there are forces that are motivating these actions and behaviors. And for most people, they're tied to some story, which is tied to, for most people, the underlying emotion driving the action mm -hmm. in the story is mm -hmm. going to be some fear. Based on your memories of the, the Fear, events, need, yeah. or desire. Yeah. And so, but the interesting thing from this is the physiology wants to maintain homeostasis. So the body naturally wants to heal itself. The cells independently right. want to heal themselves. And we know that, for example, if I do this to you, your eyes blink, yeah. your breath holds, yeah. you get a dose of adrenaline, yeah. I've triggered your autonomic nervous system. Yeah. And so we know Western science perspective you know, what's, what's going on there. But, you know, if, if I say that, you know, your house just burned down or something like that, arguably similar, chem, uh, rea similar chemicals are being released into your bloodstream. And from the cells of your body's perspective, they don't know the difference, mm -hmm. right? And so the thing is that if we, the, 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 the question of health and mind-body relationship is arguably if we, <laughs> if we can loosen the mind's strings influence on the physiology, the physiology will naturally maintain, move towards right. a sense of homeostasis right. and health. And so the question is, what is it that takes you out of health? And arguably it's, it's this conditioned behaviors that usually have come from trauma or actions or a conditioned way of, of acting, which doesn't support the physiology or arguably this natural intelligence of these cells splitting and you know, DNA strands rep sure. replicating. So replicating what's the implication? Elements. So what follows from that? And what, what should I do to be more healthy if that's true? Well, so the, the, the trick to be more healthy is to listen to your body. Because right. <laughs> there, arguably there is a natural intelligence. And for you, you are very intelligent and you travel all around the world. And I know your busy schedule and, <laughs> and how stress influences that as well too. And the interesting thing about for you about stress, and we've talked about this before, is it kicks your energy up. Now, the other interesting thing is when we were a baby, you know, our energy and our ability was fairly low and our knowledge was fairly low. So information and energy perspective. But as you grow, you know, you become more capable. And what enlightenment is potentially is the ability to reach escape velocity. And so the question is, can you maintain a high state of energy independent of context, independent of the stories? And the only way you can do that is to live from presence.